Hey, David. Hey, Susie. How are you? It's good to see you. I'm blaming my assistant IT person here, Hallie. <laughs> of course, she's amazing at it. We should have had her on. Wait, tell her to pop in. Hey. Oh, hi, my dear. How are you? I'm good. I'm helping him with his Instagram live tech today. So but that's why aren't you here at my house helping me? Because we both <laughs> fit desperately and you're amazing at it. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying. Well, you guys have fun. You should be all good to go now. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. Bye, Susie. Yeah, David, thanks so much for taking some time. Uh, oh, pleasure. Pleasure. To be with us today, and we've got some cool stuff to talk about. Uh, everybody knows, I think, your background, but we're going to give them a little update. But I don't know if my numbers are actually right, so you're going to have to correct me on this if they're not right. So, David, 2017 PGA Teacher of the Year. 26 major champions in your stable of professionals. Is that close? Uh, 23, actually. So, 23, yeah. okay. 150. Yeah. I'm not sure if you see if you like Gary Play, you count playoffs as a winner. You see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, understood, understood. But you have, a, I think, over 150 professional tournament wins with your. Uh, yeah, something like that. And um, yeah, seven world number one players, men and women. So it's, it's been a fun ride. Seven, number one. So, uh, you know, it's an honor, obviously, always to be with you. But oh, thank you, Susie. Well, it's an honor to be with you. You're doing a well, great wanna, job, sir. Yeah, well, I want to say thank you because you've always shared your information so freely. I mean, I think you've been teaching close to 40 years. Um, you know what, Susie? Okay, so here, here's a fact, right? And I'm, I was sort of shocked, horrified, all in one uh, the other day when, because, you know, I turned pro when I was 15. Uh, sorry, 17, not 15. I'm not Bernard Langer. But anyway when I was 17. So I gave my first golf lesson, heavens knows what it was like, when I was 17. So 50 years ago, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you are getting old. So, Do you remember but, the first one? Uh, you no, know, to be honest, I don't. I mean, be well, honest, <laughs> I don't know. You know it's like, it was probably, it probably about the memorable occasion anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, what made you even give a lesson at 17? Were you walking the range and hitting a ton of balls and they thought you knew what you were talking about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, you know, I, I actually, I went to college for uh, all of six weeks, I think, and uh, most of my parents sort of uh, dislike uh, or disdain, whatever word you want to use, but uh, I just, I wasn't a college type person, I suppose. So um, we had a pretty good education because I grew up in Africa, which was a sort of a British schooling system. But yeah, I turned pro very young, the, the, where I was a junior member, the pro said to me, said, hey, why don't you become an assistant and work your way up? And Hey, you can play. You could. Hey, you maybe become a club professional, and uh, so yeah. You know, I just like the lifestyle and the and the people, and uh, and I actually really from a very young age I enjoyed helping people, and so and I was probably with my own game. I mean, I I got to the finals of tour school in Europe, and I I missed a putt on the last hole to get my card, which is probably I would say that was the best putt I ever missed, but. Uh, because it gave me the opportunity to decide, okay, I think teaching is my deal. And I, I, I've loved it, really. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, teaching, you know, it's so rewarding in itself. I mean, uh, hey, we all get different sorts of rewards from it, whether it be monetarily or just personal. And the fact that you can help people to improve their games, no matter what their level, uh, to me, has always been my, my, my thing. So it, it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's, I always say I've never worked a day in my life. Even though it's hard work, we know. I mean, you know, when you... When you're an assistant pro, when I when I first come out of the states, and you know you're up at you know six thirty in the morning in the shop and helping out, and you know it's it's not it's not an easy job. So I, I don't think we we got into it for the money to start with. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I feel like undercover boss this week, David. To your point, because we're not <laughs> open yet for lessons. People are just playing, and I'm behind the counter answering phones, trying to run Jonas, right. and they can't wait to get me out of there because I'm completely clueless. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what's happening, and I'm just messing everything. Up. I know, yeah, I, yeah. You have to hand you have to hand it to these people that work so hard in in the shop. So I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, what? So, David, what was there a person? Was it a moment in time where you just decided that y you could be good at this? That you knew where to head with people? Uh, you know, I, I it's it's funny. I don't think it's one moment in time. I mean, I used to work with a very well known professional that actually came over to America. His name was Phil Ritson. And Phil and his wife, Reno, was a member of the LPGA and so on. And so they, you know, he really helped me with my golf game. And uh, he actually helped me get over to the States. He was the golf director at Disney World for a number of years. And uh, so, he, I mean, he, he had people working for him, like Mark Russell and Sligo White from the 
from the PGA Tour who are rules officials now, and we still reminisce about old days, old time with Phil. But um, no, so it was it was just one of those things. I've always was always interested in the swing, and um, you know, I've collected books. I've got a book collection here dating back to. 1878, I think, when um, uh, my oldest book is. So instruction has always been something, and you know, the fascination and the mystery of it all. And so, and we're still learning. That's that's the great thing from my standpoint. Even as at this late stage of my career, you're still learning, and it's it's fascinating to see how people are coming up with new stuff. But it's, I mean, in the end, I think we also have to sort of. Um, think in terms of how great some of their teachers were in the past. I don't think they get enough recognition. I mean, we talk about the great players of the past, obviously, regularly, but some of the great teachers of the past, they only get sort of passing recognition, whether it be Harvey Pennick or John Jacobs or Ernest Jones. And those, those people, um, you know, Paddy Berg, for instance, you know, I mean, those people were, you know, players uh, to a certain extent. They were part-time teachers, part-time players, but I mean, they got the job done, and so they helped people, and they didn't have all the technology, obviously, we, we have today. So it's just amazing. It's really, in the end, I would say to the people that work for me and with me that, you know, it's the art of communication. It's like you want to learn as much as you can so you can teach as simply as you can. I mean, that's why a method per se doesn't work. And so we have to be careful with all the, you know, with all the social media now that, we don't try to get everybody and pigeonhole everybody in the same little pigeonhole because we all know we're all different the way we think, the way we move, the way we're built, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I, I think that's, that's the key really as a, as a teacher and a coach. You work, you work out how you can actually uh, get this particular player, whatever their talent level is, how you can get them to full their potential and enjoy the game. Because really, if we want to keep the game healthy, we need, as coaches and teachers, we need to find simple ways to get people to play better quicker. I mean, in a nutshell, because people, people don't have a lot of time these days. I mean, you think about it. I mean, you know, when, you know, 20 years ago, you didn't, you know, if somebody called you from the office, you'd say, you know, they'd leave a message on your answering machine, you call them back the next day. Now it's like everybody wants now, you know, <laughs> a reply quite straight away. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's sad in many respects because the golf course should be a sanctuary where you get away from it. So it's nice to see some of the clubs say, hey, no cell phone, which is, you know, which is great. Yeah, I know. I think, you know, COVID now that people are getting back to golf and they're being away from it, obviously safely and, and appropriate distancing, I'm seeing a little bit of that gratitude again at clubs where they're just enjoying getting out for a few holes, enjoying the walk um, and, and playing a little better golf too uh, because they're a little <laughs> less stressed out, right? I think yeah. the other thing no time is, is, you know, people really don't practice a lot, right? They don't, they don't put in a lot of time, but they have really high expectations. No, no, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting seeing all these, you know, we've had hundreds of people send in swings and looking at people hitting nets or just sticking sheets up in the yeah. backyard and I mean, all sorts of things just to hit balls. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, which is, in some respects, they may come out, as you well say, they may come out playing better because they're, you know, they've, they've worked on some things. Maybe they've got loose, uh, they've limbered up somewhat. Uh, maybe they've had some instruction along the way. And, and we know, look, it's like if you, if you put a little time into it and you work, you know, you work that technique correctly, you can play better golf because the golf ball, Golf ball doesn't know how old you are, so it's not a case of, well, I'm too old to play this game. That's nonsense. You know, as long as you can walk and move and uh, have reasonable flexibility, you can play great golf for a long time. Yeah, I, you know, I'm so with you on the methodology thing because I think for me it was all just experience-based, right? It took me many, many years to figure out people's swings and how to deliver that simplicity, which is what you're so amazing at. Um, but you realize very quickly, everybody's arms aren't the same length. They're not the same body type. There's just no way their biomechanics are the same. So their sequencing right. is not the same. Their kinetics not the same. Their force is not the same. Um, right. So what you thought is coaching. Yeah, so I, can, I can tell you, I'm a detective. I can tell you. See, so you just went through the Mike Adams, Terry Rolls uh, series of sessions, right? Um, so, yeah. Which is very interesting. Years. 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the anthropometric or what, anthro, what's that word that they keep using? Anthropro something. Oh, something. that's right. But, yeah, it's too, it's, sorry, too difficult for me. I'm sorry. Yeah, my it's age. difficult for me too. But tell me, <laughs> your faults and fixes book was like a staple for me when that first came out as a young teacher. It, it just gave me kind of a reference. You've been amazing at training other teachers that have worked for you directly and with you. You've, you've published so many books. Tell me a little bit about your online uh, course 
that you've put together for, for 2019 that I, I'm so excited about too. Well, you know, we, we've, we've got the, it's the Ledbetter University. As I, as I said earlier, I never went to university really for any length of time. So it's, it's funny they have one named after me now. But you know, we're, we're trying to put this, this, this online program together um, to, to assist teachers. Because I think, look, the more educated you are, okay, the, the better you can do your job. It's as simple as that. And we know in coaching and teaching now, there's a lot of different areas. I mean, people are specializing. I mean, obviously on tour, I mean, people have an entourage. You know, you've got a swing coach, a wedge coach, a putting coach, a mental coach, a workout guru. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's like tennis, you know, right now, really. And so, obviously, it's an, expense, it's, an, it's an expensive deal for, for these players. But, I mean, they're making so much money that, look, if you can get an edge, why not? So, but as a coach and a teacher, we sort of have to have sort of some knowledge in all these areas, you know, whether, whether you're working with kids and you recommend, uh, hey, a better nutritional program when they're on the golf course. I mean, things of that nature. I mean, you know, it, 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 it interests me because really it's, as I like to call it, I mean, you've got to have the holistic approach to golf. If you're just one dimensional, well, yes, you, you might help some people. And we know that obviously the biggest part is probably helping people with their long game uh, for the most part. And, uh, but, you know, having knowledge of the short game, having having knowledge of course strategy and performance coaching for players. It, it, even, I say, we, we have to be careful. I mean, a lot of instruction today is geared at the very good players. We know that. If you go on, you know, you only have to go on, you know, YouTube or something and see, well, you know, watching Brooks Kepka swim. Well, what, what, what good is that for, like, I mean, even Nick Faldo tweeted the other day, he said, well, hey, <laughs> this is going to hurt you if you try this. <laughs> so, so, so. Right. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's really hard, uh, I mean, for people to sort of look at Brooks Kipka or Michelle Wee when, you know, when she's swinging at, you know, the speed that she swings it at and say, hey, OK, well, I want to swing it like her. Well, you know, I mean, the, the, these people are athletes. I mean, and so uh, so anyway, the, the course itself has a lot of different components, including biomechanics and the mental. So I mean, got some great uh, contributors, too. People like Jim Lair, who's a very well-known sports psychologist who's worked with all sorts of different people, and J.J. Reve, the sports uh, biomechanist from, uh, in Europe. And, you know, we've got to say it's, it's, it's really it's exciting because we've got people yeah. signed up. And it's not, to, it's not to compete with the PGA. It's just the fact is that, look, if we, can get, if we can get more educated and make our jobs simpler to actually, in the end, the end result, hopefully, is that we're going to help people in a, in a, as I said a few minutes ago, in a shorter, quicker time to play better golf. Because if you, if you can hook those people, listen, nobody's going to give up golf oh. if you're enjoying it and you're playing well. People give up golf because they're frustrated. Yeah. And educating coaches from some of the best minds in the world is the intent, right? We, we want everybody to, to be better. We want to have higher skilled coaches in the marketplace for all of our consumers. And, yeah. and certainly is going to be available to PGA professionals on top of the current education curriculum that we have, which is exciting. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's really exciting. And, you know, the, the, I mean, the PGA do a really good job. And I have to say the last couple of years, and maybe you had something to do with this, but I mean, the, the, the education has really improved. I remember, I mean, what really sort of uh, tickled my fancy, as they say, years ago when I first came over here, that was 1976 I came over here and when Gary Wyron was running the education department. And we had people like Toski and Flick and Bill Strasbar and Paul Berthley. And it was just like, I was like, wow, you know, and these people knew what they were talking about. And, and that sort of got my mind really thinking at that point in time. And that really, you know, at that point, that's when I wanted to come back to the States. Because I thought, well, they're, very, they're so go ahead. They really want to see if they can actually help their the PGA membership to become better coaches and teachers. So I, I, it's, it's wonderful, I think, that, uh, I mean, there is a much, much more in-depth quality uh, coach, uh, coaching process going on out there now. These young teachers, I mean, there's some really good teachers out there. I mean, I have to sort of think, ooh, you know, it's like, <laughs> and, and they teach almost talking a different language these days, you know. Uh, and so, uh, I, I suppose, you know, look, I'm I'm sort of a bit old school in many ways, but I, I I love all the new stuff, all the technology, and but in the end, I think I always say to my younger coaches, look. These are tools. These are tools that you use. In the end, it's how you put the message across. Because, I mean, you, don't, you really don't need to tell everybody everything you know. <laughs> because it's like it's, you know, the old, well, paralysis or analysis syndrome that players can uh, obviously get into. Yeah, and most of us don't teach high-level tour players, right? We teach people who just want to enjoy the game more. And that yeah, that's true. 
it's really in the delivery, right? You can have all the information, you can have every gadget, but so does the person down the street, right? They have yeah. the gadget that do, and I think at the end of the day, it's about people, it's about the consumer, it's about the partnership you have with that person in front of you. Uh, yeah. Connection and making sure that they trust you. Um, right, 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 exactly. I was doing a, I was doing a Instagram thing the other day, and I can't remember who said, uh, but, but they said, one of the questions was, listen, um, look, if you've got some young coach, and, and unless they've given, I think they used a number like 5,000 lessons or something, do you think this coach should actually be teaching tour players? I mean, starting off at sort of, you know, that, that'd be like, you know, that'd like be going to university for a, for a year and then becoming sort of a, a nuclear physicist, you know? So it's, it's, you know, it's like, you know, because let's face it, you know, and in coaching and teaching, the one big thing that all great teachers, I mean, you, you look at the Butch Harvards of the world, I mean, they have great instincts. They know when to say something, when they know not to say something. And some of it could just be sort of fluff. Hey, yeah. looking great. Give them a pat on the back. Or, hey, off you go. And the player plays great. And they say, well, whatever Butch told me, it really worked. You know, so <laughs> it's like, yes. Yeah, so so it makes you, you know, they make you look like a hero. And that's the thing. I think as coaches and teachers, I mean, look, I've had some wonderful people who I've had the opportunity to teach, but really I'm only as good as the horse. Okay. So I'm, I'm the jockey, so to speak, but the horses, <laughs> you know, you've got to have some talent out there and uh, there is some serious talent in the men's and the women's game now. So let, let, let's give people some access and then we'll talk about this cool day tomorrow. But yeah. now I see you at championships. I, I see you uh, at the masters following some of your students and, and uh, being there for them uh, for their performance. When you're following uh, the, the actual group that you're watching or the player that you're working with, um, for those of us who don't have the opportunity to do that with a player that are listening, you know, what are you looking for? What, what are you trying to dissect for that player? Or is it just, are you just there as, oh, yep, he's there. And so now I know I'm playing well. Well, it's some of that, I think, because a lot of times a, a player needs to, likes to look around and see their coach. But on the other hand, I've got players that, hey, listen, I don't want you watching me <laughs> because I've become too self-conscious of what I'm doing, yeah. you know, but I think you're, you're looking for little things. We know that, look, people perform differently on the practice tee compared to the golf course. I mean, and things like routine, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, strategy, look, when you're at the highest level, I mean, these, these, these guys and girls are really good. I mean, they've got great caddies. So, I mean, unless they're a complete rookie out there, then from a strategy standpoint, you hope, you hope they've got that aspect of it, but it's just the little things and, you know, maybe a certain shot on a particular hole and, uh, you know, you occasionally you, know, you can get right behind them and see their alignment and see a swing where you can see maybe the tempo of the swing. So it's lots of little things. And it's just it's just really being out there, too. I mean, it's just fun being out there. And, you know, it's, it's nothing more invigorating. Look, I, I guess it's the next best thing to doing it yourself. I mean, I, I always remember people, I was asked this morning when I was doing an Instagram and they said, what was your favorite uh, Sky Sport win to be made. What was your favorite major win? And I always say, because my, one of my really dear friends is Nick Price. I, mean, I grew up with him and we played junior golf together. And, and he won the Open at uh, Turnberry in 1994. And he pipped uh, Jasper Pollock by a shot, I think, in the end. But on the 17th hole, I mean, he holed like a 60-footer across the green. And he must have jumped, you know, for eagle, must have jumped six foot in the air. I mean, it surprised me how I could jump. Never mind that he actually holed the putt. But uh, it was uh, it was really you know so it's invigorating, it's exciting, and you sort of get into it, and it's uh, but in the end, look, the player does it. I mean, as coaches and teachers, we're guides, and so I mean, it's nice to have a lot of recognition, and you know, for players to say, hey, thank you to, uh, thank you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is nice. It's a nice feeling, but and I suppose I mean, from a mercenary standpoint, having worked with all these players, it sort of helped. The business. I mean, it's become more of a, a business. I mean, academies and books and videos and teaching aids and corporate deals. And I mean, it's the fact is they, you know, I've hoodwinked a lot of people for a long time. It, you know, people think I'm good for some reason. Who knows? <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> <Because> you are. <laughs> so, you know, hey, you know, sometimes you can, you know, BS baffles mine sometimes, you know, so anyway. But, it's been, you know, it's been a great ride, and I, I, people say, how would you change it? I don't think I would, really. I mean, it's like I've just enjoyed it, and, you know, I've met my wife through golf, my kids play golf, and they're all doing different things. And so, as you know, you know, and being in a golfing family, I mean, it's, uh, it's fun. I mean, watching your daughters play in Q school, I mean, it can be frustrating, but it can, can be exciting, too. So it's, we have, we've had a lot of great times over the years. What haven't you done that you want to do? 
Ah, oh, jeez. Ah, uh, what haven't I done? I don't know. We're, you know, we're, we're, I'm trying to slow down a little bit, you know, I mean, but yeah, you know, with all this stuff, you know, I mean, people can get hold of you at any second of the day, but no, I want to, I want to do some more traveling and I mean, I've never been, I mean, I've been to a lot of countries in the world through coaching and teaching and, uh, but I want to spend a little time in New Zealand. I mean, I've got some unbelievable golf courses over there and maybe do a few different things. I want to learn the guitar and, uh, Nice. I want to do do a little more fishing and so on, you know, just uh, do things. But, uh, you know, but I, I still love to keep, coach and teach. I'll probably drop dead on the practice team, knowing me, you know. Yeah. So, or, or maybe or maybe maybe rushing to the health food stores, my wife, as Kelly would say. <laughs> what, what, what have you been binge watching? Uh, we've been doing some Netflix stuff, you know, uh, and uh, but actually I, I was watching the you know, the, the Mike Adams, Terry Rolls thing, which, you know, was, it's quite time consuming, but very interesting listening to all these different uh, experts in their field. Um, so I'll be, I suppose that's, that's a bit uh, binge watching, but I've been, um, yeah, I've been doing some, some Netflix uh, stuff, uh, some series, some actually, I don't know, growing up with British series, I've listened to a few British series. So it's, it's been, it's been pretty cool. So it's like, you know, you actually get to do things. I think the thing is, I don't know about you, Susie, but I mean, I, I've always, I've tried to stick to a routine, you know, so trying to go to bed at the same time, get up at the same time, work out and do the stuff that, because, you know, it's so easy just to get, you know, and to feel negative about the whole situation. And, but, you know, you've got to be optimistic. I mean, you know, I did a whole thing with Gary Player a couple of weeks ago. I tell you, anytime you feel a little bit down, you listen to that guy, it's like, whoa, you're pumped. You know, he's <laughs> like, uh, you know, he's 84 years old and the guy, you know, right. he acts like he's 24 which is great. I mean, if you can do that and have all that enthusiasm and zest for life, yeah, and this, hey, this is, I mean, this is a tough time. We know, I mean, in history, I mean, this is like unprecedented. I mean, who could, I mean, three months ago, you couldn't have dreamt something like this would ever happen. All these poor people that are at work, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's just, I mean, all around the world too, and all the people that, you know, all the people that passed away through this, this uh, disease, um, and uh, it's, I mean, it's a hidden enemy. And so uh, it's, it's tough. And so, I mean, we just, we really have to sort of be very thankful for what we've got and what we've had. And hopefully, look, we get back to somewhere close to it. I mean, maybe things might change in the future. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we, we might not do as much travel and we might sort of have to you know, do, do more of this type of thing. And maybe you see somebody less often on the, on the range and you see, you know, you follow up with them, um, you know, stuff you know through the computer so it's like it's uh you know it's uh you know it's going to be interesting times but I, I think look things will come back to some extent i mean well this this ill this disease uh this pandemic is not going to disappear overnight okay yeah. it's not all of a sudden just stop and so i mean we've got to be watchful for it so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with all these sporting events and obviously the tours and what they're going to do because they only have to get one person to get it and hey this whole thing could start off again you know so yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, it's uh, a <laughs> it's worrying times, but say, you've got to keep a good attitude, you know, you've got to be, you know, you've got to keep a smile on your dial, as I say. Yeah, it'll be interesting when they start the tour back up in June, right, to see how it goes. We've got the PGA champ. Um, yeah. In August, I think people are ready to get back to it. It cracks me up that you think you're binge watching like me as total golf instructor nerd material. <laughs> you know, <laughs> 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 that's right, that's right. Yeah, I think you get enough, right? But you and I are sitting around for two and a half hours watching golf instruction. I mean, who would guess, right? That's yeah. our people watching. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's, you know, it's all a lot of people, but anyway. But I think, you know, what you're doing for, for people that are suffering, what you're doing for golf is amazing with this world's biggest golf lesson. So let's talk about that a little bit. I caught wind of it about a week and a half ago and uh, saw your name attached. Yeah. Immediately gave a shout out. And well, said, it's uh, actually... Yeah, uh, my associate in, who lives in Britain, who runs the Lead Better Kids program, he's in charge of all our junior golf, and because um, we have this program where we get kids from the age of four starting, to help them to become athletes and get into golf. He said, and he runs that whole thing. Uh, so Gavin Greenville Woods, his name is, and a uh, great guy, and he, he just he came up with this idea. He said, you know what, um, I, the the record, the world record for giving golf lessons was in a soccer stadium somewhere I don't know where or when but it was he said it was about 10,000 people so now we've got plans to sort of try to access 120,000 people to watch around the world okay so that's why it's called the world's biggest golf lesson.com and it's going to be on Instagram live and uh, you can go to pga.org and it's on there and, and all the money that's going to be raised 
is, is goes to charity. And so people hopefully will donate and essentially probably most of the pros will be giving a 50 to 30 minute putting lesson. I'm going to be auctioning off a lesson to see, you know, people will pay a couple of dollars for that. And so, but it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's at 9 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. And so it's, um, the, the interesting thing is that it's, uh, in the US, uh, the money's gonna go to the relief fund, okay, which obviously uh, the golf emergency relief fund where people in the golf industry, particularly golf professionals who are really struggling at the moment and uh, are out of work and have, can't teach, et cetera, et cetera, you know, trying to help and support them because it's a, such a worthy cause because I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's a struggle for a lot of people. So every dollar that's raised will, will go to the, in the US will go to the relief fund uh, that's my understanding. Well, I think there may be a couple of you said, hey, listen, we've got a charity we want to send it to, which is okay. And so uh, in Britain, it's going to the NHS, the National Health Service. Um, um, and so, you know, these uh, and different countries have got, have got different charities. So it's, uh, so we're, we've got 450 teachers signed up at the moment. We're trying to aim for over 600. So they're, they're, they're looking at maybe 120,000. I mean, I remember years ago, we opened an academy in Austria. I think I gave 200 lessons in a day. So 120,000 is uh, way beyond me. But, uh, but it's going to be interesting. It's going to be exciting to see that uh, we can raise the money for good. And, you know, I mean, some of us are a little more fortunate. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's, it enables us as a brotherhood to sort of give back to people who are just fortunate. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. What, you know, across the world, you have $4 billion back to charity through golf events. And that certainly has been impacted by COVID because we're not having these golf events uh, over the course of the last three right. months. People still aren't playing the game. And so to come together uh, in a unified way around the world as golf coaches is incredibly cool. Uh, to your point, we have 29,000 PGA professionals, all of whom have been shouted out to yesterday and today to register. I think the registration is uh, worldsbiggestgolflesson.com if you're a coach. And if you're That's a consumer, exactly. coach who does Instagram Live, uh, if you don't have a coach, you're going to follow David tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern time. I'm at Mama Wales. I'll be doing a putting lesson at 9 a.m. Eastern time, but find a local coach if you have one that's doing it uh, so that you can connect with them if you've never had a coach. Um, certainly, we want to help you play a little better golf, uh, get a little putting lesson from us, but if you have the, the means, we realize it's a challenging time, but if you have the means, we hope you donate uh, at that same site, worldsbiggestgolflesson.com. Tomorrow, Tuesday, May 5th, 9 a.m. David, I can't thank you enough for doing this. You're amazing. You've Thanks, talked Susie. so much along the way. I'm so grateful, uh, and I hope you just keep doing what you do. Um, keep being a kind of a golf instructor uh, geek and, and watch, been watching. <laughs> <instructor. laughs> yeah, that's right. Maybe I shouldn't have left that out, right? So, well, even what's he watching golf instruction for? So it's like, hey, you never know. You only you pick up one little gem, right? It just helps. Uh, Absolutely. I love always learning is what makes you so amazing. So thanks for being with us uh, on PGA. Thanks, Susie. And you stay safe. And everybody out there, everybody out there, stay safe and uh, enjoy getting back on the golf courses again. But be smart. Yeah, be smart. Stay safe, everybody. Have a great night.